You gotta swirl the bottom, stir it off the bottom. You know? We are back on site this morning, and believe it or not, Jamie found something for Jason to paint already. Yeah. But you're loving, aren't you? Oh yeah, you know me. <laughs> I start the day off right with some painting. There it is. So what's going on here? Well, you know, my logs, these are really nice, high quality logs and you got to seal the end grain so it doesn't dry too quickly and crack and check. So I thought, why not get him to do it, you know? <laughs> In the middle of the holly bush. <laughs> that one's got some mud on it though, you'll have to get off. What one? That one. Yeah, no. just pay right over it. Yeah. Right. Mud works too. We are going to load these logs onto the trailer, but we're sitting on pretty good slope here. I don't know if you can tell on camera or not, but if you didn't know, when you put your vehicle in park, it's usually just the back wheels if it's rear wheel drive, meaning that if we all of a sudden unweight this trailer and lift the back of the truck up slightly as we're loading, <laughs> see ya. And I've seen this happen a lot on a hill where people don't think about it and like, oh, let's load something, especially a machine. If you drive it up the back yeah. and it lifts the tongue, Totally. The vehicle and the trailer you just... You are in a bad spot. Yeah. So either we're going to have Jamie sit in the truck and hold the brakes, which will hold all the brakes on, or we're going to like chalk all the wheels with some logs before we do this. And I'm just mentioning this because it's a real safety hazard, and I've seen this happen uh, just for your own edification. If you're loading on a hill, be careful. This fire burned down and in the meantime we're getting the exit ramp off the road into the drive and parking area built here we're gonna have to wait though because a part of this parking area is actually going to be retained by the foundation wall and uh the best tool out here besides the excavator i think is this believe it or not we're gonna have to push this fire somewhere else because it's still in our way and it's still burning Jason had the great idea. Come up the hill, shove it over here. Yeah. Just let it burn. Well, what? we're gonna lay out the house right there, so it needs to be down the hill the further. Yeah. Whoa. Holy moly. Sort of out of breath from raking, but there we go. Our uh, semi-circle driveway is roughed in here. And Jason was just saying, it's amazing. <laughs> like looking at this from two days ago, you couldn't even see through here five feet. I would be like, nah, 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 <laughs> But um, I think we're ready for some gravel. As far as the drainage goes here, we're trying to get drainage to go around the back of that parking area and then it'll come down this road, but it, it'll just sort of run off as it goes. Hopefully not all running to here, then running across, because that will make a ditch. Um, the reason we didn't put a culvert there or there is because of the underground power line that is run right there. So we're going to see if we can do without a culvert. If we do have to get a culvert, we're going to have to get Duke Power out here. I mean, we're definitely going to dig up the power line is what it boiled down to. So we're going to let it rain really hard at least once and, and see what the drainage does and then we can fine tune it. Me and Ramel have the property line marked. We have the 25 foot setback, which is the line that we cannot, shall not, must not under any circumstance build a house beyond that line towards the neighbor. And it's time to actually pin out the corners of the house and see its actual location. 
I think it's Ramel and I would be the proper you know, way to say I that. I thought about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's okay. I'm better at numbers than <laughs> words. <laughs> Here's a rough outline of what the structure will look like in 2D. This is the entry porch covered, main body of the house, bump out for the living room. And then this is a deck, the double line around the master kind of bedroom area. Moment of truth here, we're gonna see what the difference in elevation is between the highest point and the lowest point. I'm guessing about 10 feet is my guess. What do you got, Jamie? Uh, that's right at two feet. Okay, so whatever you get plus two feet. We're using our Geomax rotary laser there. Thank you, Geomax. He's leaning the stick because he's really close, but a little high, and that's basically shortening the stick. Two inches less than 10. All right, nine foot eight, so plus three. So that corner would be roughly 13 feet high on the foundation. What's up? Hi. Uh, I'm waiting on the small machine again. We are back on site this morning, and we've got some extra help today. Kelly and Brandon from Geomax, and they brought some of their high-tech equipment to help us pin the corners. What do you call this machine? It's the Geomax Zoom 95. They can use this to pinpoint our corners of the foundation without having to pull a tape across this really steep slope accurately. What have we been doing? Drop <laughs> your wallet, bro. <laughs> They just like 3D print the puddings too. Yeah. <laughs> just have the concrete coming. So the total station eye moves automatically and it locks onto this prism and it can just follow this thing around. So in a second, you're going to see this just moving and like following this prism and telling Kelly exactly where he is like in real time. Our normal way for marking foundations is just pulling tape measures across the ground. That works great on flat sites. You can measure the diagonals very accurately and get those corners located. On a slope site like this though, it's a little bit of a mystery as to how you do it <laughs> accurately because when you pull a diagonal or even a length dimension down a slope, you're gonna be measuring short. It's all about the hypotenuse as we say. Yeah. And so to accurately find out what the diagonal is at the angle, you gotta do some serious math. And maybe you could use a program like SketchUp to get those diagonals that go down a slope accurate, or you have to get everything perfectly level from the highest point. So in order to get this corner using tape measures and string lines, we'd have to like set a ladder right there, climb up the ladder, then somehow hold two tape measures, a straight number and a diagonal number, and then right in the corner of those tapes, when we have it just right, drop a string line connected to a plumb bob to the ground. Have someone else down under the ladder, yep. like marking where that plumb bob is once it stops swinging. Yep. And we've done this, like on tons of jobs. It does work, you can do it. That's called um, getting triangular. Yeah, no it's not. <laughs> no, but seriously, you could, you could build some batter boards, that would be great, but yeah. we're talking 10 feet high in every corner. Yeah. That'd be tons of material and time to just build the structure that would actually hold your string lines. Just yep. down and do so that. there, there's those set on a couple points there. Now that we have these points programmed in, it's just giving him directions, literally how far by feet and inches to move, you know, the stake. And there we go. So I'll move in. Just like Google Maps, kind of. Recalculating. Yeah. <laughs> Recalculating. Exactly. Yep. So and I'm right here. You know, I get two tenths over. And there you go. Wow. And it even has a little pre-indented spot. Yeah, don't, don't tear these up, but we'll be all right. I think we're good there. Yep. Yeah, okay. I mean, that rod's made for I'm going to select the next point. Okay. Now that we have our points, the guys are pulling string lines, and they're going to go ahead and mark on the ground exactly the outside of our footing excavation here, which is eight inches outside of our corner, and that's basically because we have a two foot bucket. We're gonna have eight inches of footing, then our eight inch block, and then eight more inches of footing sticking out cool. is the goal. So mark it up. We've got marking paint and all purpose flour. The flour works better, by the way. It does, you can see it better. And it's cheaper. 
This video is brought to you by AG1. And if you don't know what that is, it's a all-in-one greens powder that I use. It helps me live an active and healthy lifestyle. It's a really easy way to make your nutrition better. It has 75 minerals, whole foods, or superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens in one daily serving. It's super simple. Just a few of the many benefits from using AG1 include supporting your gut health, supporting your immunity, getting better energy, faster recovery, and even better focus. For me, it's just so much simpler and so much more enjoyable than taking a handful of pills and vitamins every morning. And even though AG1 is green, it does not taste like broccoli or Brussels sprouts. I actually enjoy the taste and I look forward to taking it every day. The bottom line here is that AG1 provides everything my body needs to be on optimal performance every day, which is what I need. So if you care about your health, I would really recommend it. If you use the special link down in my video description, you'll get a year's supply of vitamin D3K2. It comes in a little dropper. I use it personally. You'll also get five free travel packs. Thanks again to AG1 for sponsoring our video. They've been a longtime sponsor of this channel, which we really appreciate. Let's get back to work. Did you like go 100 miles an hour on a motorcycle on the way here? I'm always going 100 miles an hour. <laughs> in my brain. One of y'all took my hammer. So. Really? Let me see your form on that thing. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, gosh, keep it, keep gosh. it, keep it. <laughs> throw Let me it see your form on that thing. Dude, that's easier than the hammer. It's oh, got more yeah. area. The hammer, you got a little. All right, then you can have that. <laughs> no, you got it, bro. You got it. I think Kelly. Oh, Kelly took it. Look at it. There he is. Kelly here was like a real surveyor, so it's killing him inside when I tell him that when he's like two hundredths of an inch off, he's still trying to like get it closer. And I'm like, no, 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 that's plenty good. But a little bit inside, he's dying. I can see it on his face. We've got our outline of the house and we're ready to dig the footings. We also have all of these reference pins that we can pull our string lines back to once we dig up the actual corners, which is important so that we can get the foundation put right back where we laid it out the first time. Super important. So we're gonna get the machine over here and get digging. John Hampton's here with us this morning and I just wanna say thanks because you've had to swap equipment for us we don't own equipment. Uh, we rent it from him. He's been very accommodating. We we got the small machine. Then we needed a bigger one, so he brought us a bigger one. And then like a day later, we're like, oh, we need a small one again for the footings because the big one's a little too heavy and cumbersome to dig the footings. Yikes! No. No. That didn't go good at all. No, he's gonna try one more time. Ray's gonna set our reader at the elevation of our laser plane right here. And we're gonna have to step down a lot of times. So we'll keep having to move that reader up the stick like eight, 16, 24, 32, like eight inch increments. Cause that's our block work and keeping the footing in the ground. Winner, winner. All right, Ray. So I'm just gonna run that out till I'm like running out of the ground at that elevation. We're getting close to running out of the ground or having the bottom of the footing run into not good dirt, like into the topsoil. So we're gonna step down 24 inches, I think right here. Um, so we're just gonna move the reader up on the stick 24 inches. I'm gonna dig vertical and we'll have a step in the footing. As we're digging here, we're doing a few things to make sure that these footings are really nice and clean and at the right elevation. The first thing we're doing is using the blade of the machine to lift up the back of the machine so the machine is sitting level. That way when we dig in, the side cuts of the footings are actually plumb, not going at an angle, and that makes a huge difference. Also, I'm using the boom swing feature of this machine to make sure the boom is aligned straight down the line of the footings as I dig, so I'm not digging to one side or the other as I'm going down the line. We're also using a laser, and that helps us get the bottom of the footing flat. Otherwise, we could be going up or down and you can't pour concrete on a slope and you also don't want to waste a bunch of concrete by making deep voids that don't need to be there. I 
I'm having to maneuver down this hill, which is a little steeper than I really like on this machine. So I'm using the bucket and the arm as a counterbalance to hopefully give me a chance of not tipping over this way, but I'm really not loving this. We've jumped from doing the 16 inch step downs to now 24 inches at a time because we're really going downhill. And you can see the reader was on the stick somewhere there when we started up there. And now it's up there. Look at Ray. <laughs> can you see it? No. <laughs> Yeah, we gotta go down. Down a little more? Yeah. All right. Down two? We finally reached the bottom down here and we're gonna go back and reference our stick. Ray has put marks at every one of the increments as we dropped. Boom, 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 boom. So we're gonna go back to number one. take number three or four I guess of trying to figure out how to get this dump truck out of here so the ground is really soft it was inviting it looked like ooh it didn't look bad drive here <laughs> uh, but it was actually softer than we expected so um, we tried pushing the dump truck oh I saw forward. all that <laughs> all right, I actually pulled it back did you see that no so he needed to get back onto the gravel to try to go at it and I got got it hooked and actually pulled it back a little bit so I felt like I did something important that's nice yeah. Um, so now he's just gonna back out of here, last over the gravel. Last resort, yeah. So, okay. Uh, I think well, if you got it under control, I'm gonna keep yeah, digging. Yeah, no, you can go ahead. You do what you're doing. Now. All right. A couple of spots here. We're packing this in with the truck, and these low spots are showing up because there's some soft spots in the dirt below this road bond. So. That's why we're packing it in now before we get any really heavy trucks on this thing. We can get a little pre-compaction and then smooth it up again. I hear a lot of talking. Let's see more racing, less talking. Because you're going uphill first, so you're going to be fresh. All right, there's no rules. Stay in the ditch. After the end. All right, ready. On Are you mark. in the corner? On your marks? Oh, wait, who's, who, you got Ray. When he gets to his corner, say done. And I'll, okay. when Eric gets to his corner, I'll say done. On your mark, get set, go. <laughs> Woo, keep it in the ditch now, between the lines. Oh, he goes for the spin. He did a full spin, not on purpose though. Oh, Eric's using the hands, going monkey style. Get set, run. <laughs> hey, thanks for checking out our video today. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you're new to the channel, please remember to get subscribed, give us a thumbs up, click the notifications bell, That'll help us out on YouTube and help you get our latest videos. Also, we do make playlists out of these videos, which means that they are on one link and they're all in order, like one through 32 on the last job. So you could watch the whole job. We also make a compilation video of each job about a year later. That's the whole start to finish. That way you can see the whole thing in one shorter amount of time. We also sell tool belts and merch. There's links to all this down in our video description. Thanks for building with us. We'll see you on the next one.